Let's start, Ji. Uh, leadership and strategy in the age of disruption. Disruption is becoming a very common word today. It's all about change. It's all about are we ready for this change. It's all about the word disruption was supposed to be a negative word historically, but these days this word is becoming a rather positive word because we are talking about how we have to get ourselves ready in the age of this disruption. And when we talk about disruption, let's be honest with each other, in our individual levels and in our professional lives, everything that we are touching is changing on such a fast pace that even we are trying to judge what is the next way forward. I remember when I was growing up, we were talking about a five-year plan for the country. Today, we are talking about six months or a one-year plans because we don't know where this disruption will lead us where this disruption will take us, and what is the way forward on that one. I think one of the other important, uh, I, I've been moderating many, many panels, and one of the, my requests for the panelists will be that even what questions come, let's talk about how we have to make changes in what we think. I think we have talked a lot about what is required to be done, what is the think tank, what the disruption can be. I think now this is more the time we talk about how we have to implement our strategies, what we are saying is the right way forward, especially for this country as well. So I think that should be the main theme that we are talking today, and that is the direction that we should take out. Irfan, uh, I would be starting with you uh, as, as the first question. How do you see, how is the concept of leadership and strategy evolved in this age of disruption, and what are the key attributes of the leader that need to possess today for this disruptive world today? Yeah, thank you, Sakib. I think it's a great question uh, because, and a very relevant one as well, because, uh, you know, the, the big disruption came, I think, in recent history, I mean, at the back of COVID, when we were uh, all disruptive, right? I mean, and we have created a new normal. And since then, I mean, if you just reflect on all the changes around us, I mean, geopolitics, supply chain issues, uh, macroeconomic issues in our case, there's a lot of uncertainty all around us. So I think it's just very relevant for any business or even people at a personal level to think different. Uh, and as you rightly said, I mean, gone are the days when you can plan long term in any business. I mean, now you have to be really agile in terms of how you adopt, how flexible you are uh, towards those changes. And role of leadership become even more uh, important and paramount. Reason being that there are a lot of people who are confused, who are uncertain, and you need to really give them not just inculcate hope, but also give them some sort of sense of direction. And that's extremely important. How you do that when you don't know the answers yourself? And that's the biggest, you know, I would say a question for leaders today. And, and, and how we are, and as you ask about, you know, the practical examples, so I think my personal experience is that you need to be super transparent. You need to really tell people uh, what you know, and what you don't know. I think it's also about experimentation. And we've been, uh, you know, uh, talking about, you know, failing fast. I think this is the time where you need to really experiment and learn from the mistakes because you're bound to make mistakes. You're bound to make some wrong calls. And how quickly you adapt and, and learn from those, I think is another sign of a, a good leader or a good organization as such. Then I think the whole, um, thinking around, as we saying, the big thinking uh, about resetting, you know, where you reset. It's about upskilling. It's about challenging the status quo. It's also about, you know, putting yourself into uh, a zone where you're discomfortable or uncomfortable, because I think we all are in that zone uh, by default these days, because we don't know and how to navigate. But I've seen whether it's, um, you know, small businesses or large businesses, that's when you grow and learn the most. When you're pushed against the wall, you, make, you need to make choices which lead towards, you know, something big. Also, I think we need to see this as an opportunity, uh, and, and many people uh, talk about it in the context of last few years, that when things are beyond your control, how you utilize your time most. And I think one insight I can share here is the best thing is to actually invest in yourself. You can learn something new, a new skill set which will really help you actually navigate. Because things will not be as bad as they are, things will improve. And we had that session earlier today as well, when there's a lot of, you know, 
speakers talk about the hope and uh, talk about the big market and demographics and all those things. So I think if you are well prepared, if you are open, transparent, honest, if you are open to experiment, if you are innovative by testing those things, uh, there is no doubt that you will do better than others. And I think that's the competitive advantage you need to build in the uncertain times. It fundraised a very important point for the leaders that it's important to tell to the people what you know and what you don't know. It's not necessary that every leader has to say that they want and they know everything. I think it's important that transparency that is there to the people that we go for. And secondly is the experimentation. This is the time of experimentation. And we will make mistakes, but we need to move forward and learn fast and adopt it fast. So thank you very much, Irfan, for, for this insight. Uh, Samina, it's an honor to have you on my panel. I think we have grown up seeing you as, as taking the leading and leader's position in, in this tech industry overall. I'm 200 years old, just <laughs> in case people don't know. It, it will tell my age also. <laughs> so I think one of the questions that I wanted to ask you that in this age of disruptions, what are the pitfalls that the leaders can, can put themselves in and how they can overcome them as well? Because it's very easy today to, to start something and then collapse it well. What is the learning there? Thank you, Saqib. Thank you, Asfar, for setting this up. Very grateful. I think it's a great audience. Um, see, there's a lot of DIY kind of things on leadership. You open up a book or you look at Google and it's all about how you're going to be a great leader. Personally, I think leaders can be trained to become leaders. That's also not a very popular thought. They think, we think leaders are born. I think people are born with a little instinct and then you can, um, you can groom them. Um, but I think of everything that a leader can be challenged with, there's a two things, Sakib, that I think are critical. One is the vision. The vision must drive the business and the vision must be extraordinary blue ocean kind of uh, vision. Let me give you two examples. Everybody's heard of the Kodak company. Mm -hmm. You remember that little line that said, you know, it's a Kodak moment. So what happened to Kodak? Kodak developed the first digital camera. And you'll hear a lot of references to IT and technology from me because that's what I do for a living. That's all I know. Um, they developed the first digital camera and yet they got left behind in, in that race. The reason was that the guy who came to the boss of Kodak, um, he said, something is happening in this space and we should try to develop more. And the guy threw him out of the office and he fired him basically. And lo and behold, they lost the market completely. Somebody else came in and took over. Why? Because there was a lack of vision at the, uh, on the side of the um, company bosses. Their people were telling them, but they were not listening. Take another example, and I'm speaking from the point of view of why vision is important. There was a little thing called SMS, short messaging service, and we were all using it at one time. Technology became so smug about themselves that we have ultimate kar liya na, bis se aage to kuch hona nahi isliye. Chalte raho jo chal raha. And their numbers kept improving, and their graph was rather like that. You know, it was tapering a little bit, it was upwardly mobile. Peeches a choti si cheez nikal thi aari thi, this was called the WhatsApp, right? And nobody did any research or market evaluation of what's happening in the competitive space. One day, the SMS graph was going like this and WhatsApp came up and did this. This has happened to Nokia, this has happened to many other technologies as well. When the leader doesn't have vision, the company is rudderless. And when the company is rudderless, what do you actually mean by that? You mean the people don't know where to go. So the second thing that's important is people management. A leader does not let people feel distressed, feel disappointed, feel insecure. And this I would apply to countries, to nations, to companies, to households. When the, lead, the moment you start to feel angst in your heart and in your head, you're thinking, you know, this is not right. That's because your leadership has not been able to give you that confidence. So at the top level, I would say vision is something that they lack. And if they lack it, then they'll get left behind. If, if your leader is visionary, this is likely not going to happen. And at the bottom uh, end, you would say people management and, 
And all of the things that we talk about, good communication, Irfan said you have to share with your teams. Uh, strategy must trickle down all the way to the lowest common denominator in a company. Everybody should buy into that strategy. Uh, but people are the weakest li link in your chain or they can be the strongest link in your chain depending upon how the leadership treats them. I would stop at those two because other than that, if you say um, communication is very good, um, plans bade hone chahiye, execution bahut detail mein hone chahiye, that's all there. But the leader is the one who inspires and whether they inspire through their own credible personality or they inspire through their ideas. I mean everybody hated Steve Jobs, he was a very rude man. But everybody bought fully into his idea of whatever he was, you know, co concocting the way, whether it be the Macintosh or the iPhone or whatever. So I think these two things. Thank you very much, Samin. Uh, uh, leadership is a responsibility. It can be put on you by fate with your ability or you are put in that position. But once you have this responsibility, you should own it. And you should own it because your own personality is the one that needs to be inspiring. People see towards you. People seek guidance from you. And you don't know what they are learning from you. So, so very rightfully said, Samina, I think vision and how we manage the people. And you said a very important point that the strategy should be understood to the last person in the chain. And if in your organization this strategy is not understood, then perhaps the leadership is not doing the right role over there. So, so very nicely said over there. Um, Ayla, over to you. And I am the most luckiest moderator because I have the maximum diversity in the panel since morning. So, so I think that's, that's something that I say great for, 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 for managing it. Um, Ayla, we have been talking about leadership and we have been talking about growth mindset continuously. How in this disruptive environment, the leader can continue with the growth mindset and how he can learn from his mistakes and implement their results as well? Difficult question, by the way. Yeah. Um, thank you, Sakib. Uh, difficult questions are always fun. So, um, uh, disruption is, of course, is a very, very interesting topic. And I believe when leaders are looking at disruption, it's obviously continuous, continuously happening around us. We need to sort of see that uh, what kind of disruptions are there geopolitical, geographical, economic disruptions, globalization, deglobalization, and then all of that with profound technological and di digital innovation. And each one of these disruptions impact our personal lives as well as whatever is happening within our organization and also the teams who are working within our organization. So the leader in the organization, or perhaps the leaders, and I, there's obviously not one, there are uh, um, uh, many people who in their own roles assume leadership role. They all need to be mindful of all these kind of disruptions and, and take out the best out of these and understand that what are the real opportunities in all these disruptions. And that can lead to further innovations. Um, uh, building on uh, what uh, Samina also mentioned, that having a vision is extremely Im important. And at the same time, being able to navigate in an environment where uncertainty would be very, very prevalent. So that is what a leader should be doing, uh, should be leading at the edge, leading at the front, ensuring that even if there's a very adverse situation, there are opportunities in them. The kind of global ecosystem that we are in, the global dynamics and clo coming closer more to ho home, lots of challenges that we have. I think given that at times one feels that we are really hitting the wall, there are still a lot of opportunities that we can find this in this absolute time of challenge and uncertainty and ad adversity. Yes, there can be many, many failures, but I think not giving up as we, as we say that, but we need to sort of practice that, uh, that as, as well. We have a lot of global e examples as well. Elon Musk, SpaceX was a failure many, many times, but eventually he never gave up. 
A uh, lot of other organizations, they also allow such kind of culture in their organizations where they empower people to think um, in a very innovative manner and outside their core area of business. Microsoft is one. They have a, an initiative called One Week where uh, uh, team, team members, they, they gather to work on projects which is completely out of their own, uh, uh, say, core, core area of business. That has led to many innovations. Jeff Bezos has also done something similar, and, and Kindle was one such innovation that came out of like these innovative discussions and something that was just not in their core area of business. Uh, I believe the lesson here is that empowering team, uh, valuing their input, valuing uh, uh, their unique ability, and getting them to provide solutions and understanding that uh, teams and probably many different organizations, stakeholders, they need to work in a collaborative manner. So, um, and, 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 and at times when there are so many interesting or uncertain disruptions happening, being ready and open to opportunities that are coming out of uncertainty. And I think we are living in a day and age where we cannot predict every, everything, but we can be agile, we can be flexible. And with that mindset, and empowering people, empowering teams, working in a collaborative manner, upskilling, continuously upskilling. Up, up and I was actually looking at what was written here on the screen, like change, realign, reinvent, align. All of this is, is, is what leaders uh, now and, and always need to, uh, need to be cognizant of. Thank, Thank you, Ayla. I, I think you, you highlighted the point of empowerment. You know, gone were the days uh, when the information was stuck into one office or in one file and the person who had that file was the most powerful person in the organization. These days are gone. I think today the successful organization is the one which empowers the people to the last end and the complete set of information lies with him or her to make the decision. Trust me, the decisions that the CEO makes and it is seen that the person on the ground makes, that's not much of a difference. The only difference is the set of information that is required to make the decision. So if you are able to give that empowerment to the person, I think that definitely makes the difference. And, and the other important point that Ayla highlighted is, we need to have the skill to find an opportunity in the crisis. Trust me, every crisis is difficult, but there is always an opportunity in the crisis. How we get to that one, that defines a leader. Uh, Mujib, uh, you have been part of almost all my panels and I love the, the smile and, and the discussion when I start chat with you. And, and I will start with you. We all are talking about that there is a disruption and then how to handle that disruption as a leader. I want to come up and ask you, what are the frameworks that we need to deploy so that the disruptions should not happen? We should be ready about it and how we should stop that, that the disruption should be as less as possible, assuming what is going to be happening in future for us. Thanks, uh, Sakib. Uh, once again, uh, at least a billion dollar question, if not a trillion dollar question, <laughs> um, on how you can be, how can you, you can be preemptive towards disruption. I, I think uh, my colleagues spoke about the uh, ability of leaders to build strategies, to build frameworks, to uh, create plans that are sort of future-proof. There's a lot of conversation these days that takes place around that as well. Another concept, not sort of trying to diminish the importance of leaders and CEOs or heads of organizations, uh, is purpose-led organizations. Organizations that uh, galvanize and spirit their colleagues and their team members around a common purpose which then drives the vision of uh, that organization uh, as well. And when that purpose is instilled in the employee base, in team members, uh, across various functions, across various departments, it becomes easier because the entire sort of organization is moving towards the same direction. 
Now, how does that help you preempt uh, disruption or how does that help you uh, overcome or uh, create a plan that uh, allows you to be ahead of it. I think if the purpose is built in a way that allows you to be the disruptor as opposed to be, being someone who responds to disruption, uh, it will automatically, it, it's a lot simpler said than done obviously, but it will instill this sense in each team that they will always be on the lookout for uh, what, what's happening around the engines. They will not be afraid of trying out things that perhaps are not common space uh, in their industry in other areas. It is, again, my, my colleagues spoke about this, about empowerment. How can you empower your teams to be able to make those decisions that help you become the disruptor? and not wait for someone else in your industry to do something and then you start following it. Again, it is uh, difficult, especially for large enterprises because of conflicting priorities, but because of challenges, in, especially in these times when there is uh, macroeconomic uncertainty in a lot of geographies around the world. But that is one thing that we have seen really work. A, a purpose that unites team members globally and a purpose that encourages them to be on the lookout for disruption. Another framework uh, that I've experienced uh, has been very successful uh, not only at S&P Global but also in other enterprises is embracing a truly diverse, equitable and inclusive culture. This is something that is Thank you, guys. This is all, I think, our, our team <laughs> doing that. Appreciate it. Um, the, and I think this is, there was a time when this was uh, meant to be a nice to have, was meant to be something that organizations did because it looked good in their annual report. Uh, that time has long gone. Unless and until it, it, there are, you know, a number of studies and research that clearly indicates that more, the more diverse, equitable, and inclusive your workspace is, it will drive business results. It will enable you uh, to be able to uh, face challenges that are happening around us more appropriately. So I think a relentless focus on creating that is going to enable you to have the ideas, have the creativity to look out for any uh, disruption that might be around in your specific industry. Uh, very, very rightfully said. Uh, I think these days the industries are not in competition with their competition that is present in that industry. Today all the industries are in competition with disruption because there is something that comes out of the blue and it completely takes away and, and as, as Mujib mentioned, the purpose is very important to be understood well in the organization to make sure that we can manage that disruption in the best, best possible way. Uh, Irfan, coming, coming back to you, uh, you know, when we talk about disruption, we talk about technology, and then we talk about leadership. Now, this technology wave is running so fast that the word ethical leadership becomes much more important because overall the laws and overall are not so strong to define us because when we are managing disruption and we are getting to a result, ethics are still an important part how the ethical leadership can play an important role in this disruptive environment today? Yeah, exactly. another great question. I think I'll, I'll just say that even before technology and technology disrupting us, it goes back to fundamental. Uh, you talk about the mission of an organization. I think the values, there's a purpose why everyone has a mission statement. And if you feel that it's just only for the boardroom or a nice board at the entrance and, and leadership doesn't believe in it, I think people are smart, especially in the knowledge economy and the knowledge workers, they actually pay a lot of attention towards what is the main purpose of our organization. Where I'm spending most of my time, productive time of a day, is it aligned with my own DNA or not? So I think people and especially the younger generation have start asking those questions a lot more than previously. Technology has bring in another dimension to it. And that dimension is 
obviously, as you're saying, the regulations, um, what I call it um, algorithm biases, right? Where you use technology a lot, uh, and, and then the outcome is perhaps biased. I mean, there are many examples, for example, uh, when you use AI uh, to screen all the applicants for a job posting, uh, it could be biased and many research uh, have shown that there are biases against, for example, gender-based biases, there could be ethnic biases, etc. Because that's how we are feeding the algorithm. And, and that is something which poses a bigger question on the leadership, where you have to actually apply and checks and balances to make sure that it's a very open and transparent system you're building in your organization. So technology is definitely complicating it. Then the whole, uh, I would say, um, the race towards uh, profitability um, and, and the practices which are being used by large corporations at the, at the back of technology also poses another dilemma, uh, which is at, at core is an ethical dilemma. Uh, and, and, and there's a lot of discussion around it, but trust me that people, and, and we have seen even in large tech, hyperscalers in, in US as well, where people from within the organization have start questioning the, the policies, whether it's related to privacy, uh, data protection, consumer protection, etc. So I think it becomes a real question, as fundamental as your core business, that how are you applying that information with your customers, and in some cases millions and billions of customers are interested upon you. Are you doing it fairly, transparently, ethically, uh, an unbiased way or not. So I think it become uh, a true uh, dimension of leadership where you need to be aware that first of all, I mean, the, the employees are asking about those questions. The wider society expect you to be uh, more <clears throat> uh, upright on those questions. And it's also your uh, role as leader to find out because the policy framework, the regulations are still being created. And, and that's the discussion happening today as we speak, that how we create those frameworks, and especially AI, I think, is a great example where we are getting into a lot of uncharted territory, and it's a collective responsibility to define the rules of the game, because this can actually uh, create a lot of issues which could be social, uh, economic, and uh, you know, ethical issues. Uh, Irfan rightfully pointed out, uh, in a country like Pakistan, uh, where culture is equally important as religion, Disruption is coming and it's very important that how we maintain our ethics in the light of this religion and culture and then also be part of this change that is coming in and embrace it as well. And, and one important sentence that Irfan said, people are smart. Let's understand as leaders, they understand what we are doing and what we are saying and what is actually happening. It's very important that we understand their smartness and make the best use of them in the ethical environment of this country. So thank you very much, Irfan, for, for that insight. Uh, Samina, coming to you and leading the question from, from where Irfan left off uh, over here. We, we know that the IQ of the people is, is important for the organization and the country, but the EQ, the emotional intelligence and the resilient nature of the organization, of the people, is equally important in that disruptive environment that we are talking about. How the leaders can manage their EQ and how they can help the organizations and the people in the organization to build that EQ and be resilient to manage this disruptive environment as it is reaching us. Yeah, yeah you can be a little close to the mic, that will help. You know, we keep talking about suddenly disruption. The disruption is part of life. Life is what happens to you while you are busy planning it. Or 10% is what happened to you, 90% how you deal with it. And that's a leader's job. Now you can see that in the USA, 50% of households have electricity साठ साल लगे थे, six zero, sixty. Look at the time span. So even if people were disrupted or distressed or something, साठ साल में तो वो छोटे-छोटे chunks में उतनी ज़्यादा angst या उतना ज़्यादा stress नहीं feel होगी. Move forward, telephone को accept करने में या telephone को prevalent करने में दस साल लगे. 
اسمارٹ فونز پہ آ جائیں اس کے بعد میں بھی پانچ سال لگے اب اور ٹیکنالوجیز بیچ میں آئیں ہاؤ لانگ ڈی یو تھنک اٹ ٹک چیٹ جی پی ٹی ٹو اوور ویل مس ہاؤ ٹیک اے گیس ویکس اینی بڑی ایلس ون ڈے اور ہنڈریڈ ملین یوزرس ون ڈے لک ایٹ دا اسپیڈ واٹ از ایکچولی چینجنگ آلسو از ناٹ جسٹ دا سینیریو آف آف اے کووڈ اور or an or a black swan event although covid 2 was not a black swan event but it was close um, mm -hmm. more than that the speed of how it impacts us and that's what gives people stress and absolutely i am i have always been a 100% believer in focusing on people i'm so happy that we don't refer to them as talent human resource personnel یعنی ہم لوگ ہیں نا تو ہمیں آپ پیپل کہہ دیں زیادہ آسان ہے بجائے اس کے کہ آپ چھ سات فینسی قسم کے ورڈس نکالیں آئی واز ٹرائنگ ٹو تھنک آف ایگزامپلس آف وین دیٹ فیتھ ان لیڈرشپ ہیز ہیپن ان آر کانٹیکسٹ ون آف کورس واز وین دس کنٹری واز بینگ میڈ اینڈ ایوری بڈی ہیڈ سچ فیتھ ان ون مین دیٹ دے ووڈ ناٹ بی ایبل ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ ہز لینگویج بٹ وتھ دے ووڈ فالو ہیم Lately, جو ہوا کووڈ کے اندر این سی او سی نے جو کام کیا آئی ڈونٹ نو ایف ایوری بڈی ہیئر ریئلائز اٹ بٹ آئی واز آؤٹ آف دا کنٹری اینڈ دی ایمنس کیوریاسٹی اباؤٹ ہاؤ پاکستان واز ڈوئنگ دس اسٹرینج تھنگ کال اسمارٹ لاک ڈاؤن واز اپریشیٹ اٹس اے کلاسک کے اسٹڈی کہ دیر واز اے کنٹری دیٹ مے بی ہیز ناٹ سین دا بیسٹ آف ٹیکنالوجی یوسیج بٹ از ایبل ٹو ڈسائڈ کہ اس محلے میں ان چار گھروں کو ہم لاک ڈاؤن کر رہے ہیں اس میں آپ کے ٹیلکوز بھی شامل تھے اس میں انہوں نے ساروں کو اسٹیک ہولڈرس کو ملا کے ایک کام کیا تھا دس از وین لیڈرشپ گیوز یو ڈائریکشن اینڈ ایٹ دی اینڈ آف دیٹ یو فیل مور کمفرٹیبل ایز اے ہیومن بینگ ایز اے پارٹیسپینٹ اینڈ یو بائی این ایف دس ڈزنٹ ہیپن ناؤ ریزیلینس از آل آف دس دا ٹائم اینگل آلسو امپیکٹس اٹ بٹ واٹ ایلس آلسو امپیکٹس از impacts it is the intensity of that disruption that is happening. The children today are more resilient. Why? Because the mm -hmm. impact of that technology-based disruption is very big. It's massive compared to what it used to be even at say 10 saal, 20 saal pehle. Um, so when you're dealing with great teams, you're actually dealing with people who can be made great or who can just run things run of the mill. پاکستان کے اندر آپ سوچیں کہ ہم نے ابھی بات کی یو نو پاکستان میں ایک پرابلم ہے ہمیں کہ ہم فیلیئر کو سیلیبریٹ نہیں کرتے تو لیٹلی وی ور تھنکنگ دیٹ وی ور ڈو سم پوڈ کاسٹ اینڈ آئی وین ٹو اے فرینڈ او مائن اینڈ آئی سیڈ آئی لائک ٹو ڈو دا فرسٹ ون ود یو اینڈ ویل کال اٹ سیلیبریٹنگ فیلیئر اینڈ ہی سیڈ ناٹ ود می آر ناٹ ڈوئنگ دیٹ آئی مین دیر ہیڈ ہی ایکسیپٹ سیز ہیڈ فیلیئرس بٹ ہٹ ڈزنٹ وانٹ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ اٹ Now, there is this one gentleman by the name of Sal Khan, Salman Khan, not the actor Salman Khan, the Khan Academy, uh, which is a massive success today. And he had a trip, he would trip over and he would have obstacles and he would have constraints and he failed many times before Khan Academy actually became Khan Academy. He gave a whole lecture on celebrating failure and it was all about how he had done things wrong many, many times. and how that learning was more precious to him. I think communication by the leadership down to the lowest common denominator of your team is important. I think buying into the vision, like you said, K, if it's a mission statement, everybody should buy into it. It's not just words. Uh, so, the, so, the, so when you say something like, Women's Day manana chahiye, March 8th ek din hota hai humara saal mein Women's Day. Baaki saare saal to hum sote rehte hain, shayad sab borte hain. I think because we're not celebrated the rest of the year. And I see a picture in the paper that has 12 men with little pink flowers. And they're saying, so and so company celebrating Women's Day. How do you suppose the women felt about that? So, I'm going to be a slightly political here and I'll say that when the women of your country are feeling insecure, when they're feeling downtrodden, when they're feeling harassed, at that time you cannot say things like, um, oh, women are well taken care of or there is 50%, 50-50 gender ratio. 
those things become irrelevant because a greater disruption has befallen us. So when you, when you do something in terms of a disruption, for example, going back to corporate um, world, you want to have a better gender ratio. You want 70-30, nay 60-40. So 60 is men and 40 is women. But what do you do? You have a tried and tested model which you've gone on and used for centuries, men being in the workplace, right? And you take these women who have all sorts of odd problems, bachche hai unke, ghar mein khana pakana hai, aur 36,000 cheeze humare saath judi hoti hai, tangi hoti hai, right? And you go, you take this, a bunch of women and you place it here. Mardon ka tariqa, aap aurton ke oopar masallat kare. Wo ho hi nahi sakta, Allah ne hume banaya hai farak. So this kind of thing in disruption also impacts more, double whammy hai ye, iske baad so unless you get out of the box, in fact, think there is no box. Can you not do that? There's a company in Argentina that lets people roam. They're roamers. Completely out of the blue, but they're doing it, right? Starbucks. If I ask you, what does Starbucks sell? Many people will say coffee. It's actually not coffee they sell, they have horrible coffee. Uh, it's an experience, it's an ambience that you ac accept as a place where you feel welcome and secure. So when you go to blue ocean from green field or you go to red ocean after that, these are all strategies for bringing up innovative solutions. Starbucks brought something new. What we've got to think is why our people don't do that. The only one I can think of right now is Nirala Sweets. If you haven't uh, done the, studied the case study for it, you should look at it in the Lums archive. There's an A and B parts. So I won't go into that for fear of time. But we are not disruptors. We are the reactive ones from, to disruption. And I think the big change that has to happen, I heard everything today and it was like up here, you know. Yaha mere sar ke upar se but in execution ke level, pe, if you deconstruct it down, this is all it's about. Think of every employee's need and don't try to greenfield it. Ke bani bhi ek cheez hai, isi mein laga do. Go blue ocean and say, why can't I do this completely differently? Uh, what's stopping me? Uh, and when you start thinking like that as a leader, your, your employees start to feel secure, they feel connected, they buy into the mission. Invariably that happens and when that happens you have a strong team. Once you have a strong team you can deal with the disruption a little better. Thank you. Thank you very much Samina. Aapne emotional intelligence ke question mein sabko emotional kar diya hai. I can tell you this मुझे बहुत अच्छा आता है करना लोगों को रोलाना. I think जो इस take में जो दो important बात थी celebrating failures. इसके लिए बड़ा दिल चाहिए, बड़ा जज्बा चाहिए होता है। We don't want to associate ourselves with failures। हम पसंद ही नहीं करते। But but important thing is to to understand and take away from that। एक सक्सेस को हम हंड्रेड टाइम्स मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे, but we will not ready to share this the failures over there। Very very rightfully pointed out। And the second thing is again going back to the masses and reaches to the people at the end। Thank you Samina for that one। Ayla coming to you। in this disruptive world, these short-term goals or long-term goals, they are very important for the organizations. You know, uh, we have a vision to achieve something in a certain period of time. And then we have a vision and a pressure to achieve a certain goal in next six months also. And then this disruption is coming in parallel. How the leaders can make that balance that they achieve the short-term goals of the organization, but also achieve the long-term vision that is important for the organization and for the country also. Yeah. Here you go. So the simple and on a lighter note, the answer would be ke nazar ka chashma pehne, jo ke aapko dhoor ki bhi dikhaye aur paas ki bhi dikhaye. So bifocal lens is what we all need to wear all the time. But having said this, um, the bifocal lens, what it shows you, the goalpost also changes and evolves. So the long-term goals and the short-term goals, they keep on changing 
with everything that is, we are talking here about disruption, we are talking about the, whether um, the enabling ecosystem, internal, external, everything, so that all has an impact. And again, I would link it to the empowerment of people that everybody needs to see a short-term and long-term opportunity in what they are doing and how they are creating value. Um, one of the very important uh, points that I would like to bring up here is, uh, is that having a value creation mindset is extremely important to see that what are your goals and how do you evolve your goals. Uh, when we talk about strategy, so within organizations, why do organizations make a three-year strategy, five-year strategy, then a rolling business plan, etc., all of that, because your goals are evolving, your goals are changing. And Mujib, you mentioned earlier about purpose. I think purpose as a long-term goal, and unless your purpose becomes really flawed at some point in time, you would like to sort of stick to it. So I think that those are the s s few things that you need to be mindful of. So everybody should have a responsibility and communicating clearly and giving people the responsibility and also recognizing the outcome of, of the actions taken. Uh, I think that is very, very Im important. And I would also like to say that uh, when long term ki baat karte hai, long term is not just five years, ten years. Long, sh long term should be five generations ahead. We all talk about our different stakeholders, planet being one of them. The planet has finite resources. A lot of what we need to achieve, whether it is in the area of energy, whether it is in the area of communication, whether it is providing food, whether it providing whatever, Land, finite. Metals in the, in, in, on this planet, finite. A lot of things are finite. So we need to see that how are we using our resources. So the resources are finite, hence we also need to see that how do we devise our long-term purpose, long-term strategy while seeing that five generations down the road, what the impact of that will be. So um, I think that's something um, we need to start and nudge our thinking that uh, A, the long term and the short term is continuously evolving. Second, uh, the responsibility and the empowerment of that must lie with everybody. Third, long term is not this five or ten years long term is very long term yeah. thank you thank you very much Ayla. long term is very long term long term is not about one generation and to be honest as leaders today we need to own it the way this disruption is happening if we are not going to make decisions right now it will hit our fifth generation and we can't do any of them and they will blame you guys and us that they didn't take the right decision at the right time. So, so very rightfully pointed out, Ayla, it's our ownership to make our fifth generation right today. And we need to take that ownership as leaders today. Mujib, coming to you as a final question for this, this panel. Uh, you know, uh, on one side, we ask the new leaders that are coming in, they need to be risk-taking. They need to make decisions. And then we don't provide them that environment to make that risk-taking and decisions. And on the other hand, we also give them accountability. Accountability of the results. That you have to this quarter mein itna karna hai. Aur saath saath you need to make sure that your ethics, your leadership, this should also run very good. How that balance can be managed and how we can provide this environment to these new leaders that they can go along with the risk taking without the fear that we put them in parallel in. Yeah, that, that's another tough one. I think the balance is very delicate because delivering on your uh, KPIs or your sales targets or uh, keeping the plumbing running, as they say, or keeping the lights on, that's, uh, that's table stakes. That has to be, uh, th th that's understood that has to be done. The other areas that you mentioned become something that's on top of that or equally important. A couple of um, frameworks, and I'm sorry, I'll go slightly tactical on this. 
but a couple of frameworks that uh, I've come across, one from our own enterprise and one from uh, someone else, that I felt did a good job of providing uh, opportunities for balancing these two things. Uh, when, we, when you talk about innovation and, and disruption or risk taking, uh, a program, and I think, again, it, it goes back to what all of us have been saying. Intent, empowerment, strategy, vision of the leader, that is beyond that, you also, one best practice that has worked really well, uh, again for us, and I've seen it work in other areas as well, is a, 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 an innovation contest type of program, but not a program that again is just meant to look good on your website or uh, meant for just advertising, but a program that actually uh, allows colleagues and people in your teams to be able to participate, give ideas, take those, those risks, and create a safe space in their uh, sort of tactical goals as well as budgets to take those experiments to make those uh, new innovative ideas work. We do it in the form of, as I said, the starting point is a contest that generates those ideas, uh, they get filtered down, and eventually there is a separate budget that comes from obviously uh, the top that allows people to invest that money into those uh, new ideas. That has generated uh, in efficiency uh, tools for us, for internal uh, workflows uh, and processes. That has resulted in at least five new product features in the last two years uh, that our people built. People that didn't have a direct role in those areas, but people were able to use that program and build, uh, take those risks. It also, might have resulted in a 3x number of five of products and ideas that didn't uh, make it to commercial uh, commercialization. But it was a tangible outcome that we were able to generate from it. Another best practice and uh, a specific framework that I've seen uh, work really well, especially for companies that sell solutions to clients, whether they're services or products, is measuring an innovation uh, component as part of, you know, just the, how you measure that deal. Traditionally, it is measured as whatever the financial component is, uh, whatever the technical component is, but adding an innovation component uh, will instill the right mindset from the get-go uh, in our uh, colleagues and team members to make sure that each solution that is being provided uh, has that component. The last comment I will make slightly on a different tangent, um, related though, is in Pakistan specifically, uh, we, we want risk taking, we want all of these things. The, the, one of the biggest challenges is our, the system, our education system that creates the people who we are going to want to take risks and want to be innovative, uh, I think a key question may perhaps for a different panel and for a different conversation is, is, it, is that system creating the, that mindset or not? Uh, sadly, I think the answer to that is not really. It is not creating a mindset that is enabled uh, for risk taking, for thinking out of the box, or uh, as Samina very rightly said, imagine that there is no box. There, for majority of that system, the teaching is there is definitely a box, and don't you dare go outside the box. Yeah. Now, if it is the expectation is that one fine morning when those graduates come to work for the corporate sector, we will weave a magic wand and their lifelong learnings of the 16, 18 years will change, that's not gonna happen. We, we try, but you know, it, it takes time. So I think that's an equally important factor to keep in mind as we address, address this topic of disruption and driving innovation, uh, etc. Thank you. Thank you, Mujib. I think you touched the topic on uh, how the leaders should be developed and, and the leadership development start from the very start. Somebody asked me when you realize when, when you will become a leader. I said I realized it when in the, at the age of 10, I was leading a cricket team of the Mohalla and I was getting all the key players to have the right set of resources to win the match. I think that was the time when I realized, yes, I have leadership capabilities there at that point of time. Even the, the next Mohalla, maybe you were capturing their, acquiring their talent as well. <laughs>
So, so ladies and gentlemen, we have talked about leadership, we have talked about disruption, we have talked about ethics in the leadership, we have talked about IQ and emotional quotient, we have talked about today how to learn from our mistakes, how to celebrate our failures. We have also talked about what is required and what is the framework that is required to be important for our future leaders to be made. I will just say one thing. Uh, these are difficult times as a country for us and it's very important for us that we remain positive around this one. And it's important for us that these leaders should get the implementers now. We have a lot of think tank, we have talked a lot and I think it's very important for us now to get what we are talking about implemented in our roles what we are. Enough of the thinking. Get the implementation done so that we can see the results and I think that is the key that is to be there. So thank you very much and thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for this panel as well. We take questions because I see hands. Okay, uh, so uh, only two questions uh, that I will say. Yes sir. And I come to you. Can we have a mic on the right hand side, please? <coughs> yes, it's it's coming. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Dr. Nazir Ahmed, professor at National University of Medical Sciences, Islamabad. It's uh, really nice, and uh, you have talked rightly about disruption and ro role of leadership. If you will see recent pandemic and still is going on, COVID-19 has the real disruption around the world. 8.5 billion trillion US dollar economy has been disrupted. It has disrupted your social fabric, governments, departments, every sphere of life, including health, wealth, environment, everything. So my question is, as a nation, as a leader, what we are doing? Are we allocating enough resources to meet our national needs, international needs? Uh, Ms. Ayla uh, talked about sustainable development. Yes, we need sustainable development. Are we keeping those things in mind while making our planning, while developing, you know, uh, strategies? And again, in my opinion, it's the leadership who take care of policies, whether be those uh, are being implemented or not. Fair, fair enough, sir. Let's, let's get to the answer. Thank Irfan you. or Samina, would Thank you, you like to, to give that one? Two minutes. Yeah, I will be just quick. I can't say as a, as a nation, but what we need to do or what, what are we doing? But I think what we need to do is to obviously prepare our citizens much better, right? So whether it's a skill set. So what we see uh, at the back of this crisis, at least there are good, uh, there's a silver lining in terms of opportunity. I give you a couple of examples. One is sort of adaption of, I would say, technology. Um, so we talk about Pakistan being cash economy. Uh, we've been trying to push a lot um, of that sort of customer behavior shift towards digitization, whether it's, you know, um, um, mobile wallets, uh, uh, digital banking, uh, also, you know, G2P interaction. Uh, and we were, we had limited success, but here comes COVID and in few days, the whole thing shifted. We've seen a huge adaption, we've seen a huge acceleration. And now the new normal actually we have settling not at the previous levels, but much better levels. So I think that's the silver lining to me, that how we are able to actually adopt to this new reality to create more efficiencies, to empower our people a lot more, gives me hope. Whether this is enough, uh, perhaps not. We need to think more holistic. Uh, but I think these are some examples, at least in, in the domain close to, to me, where I see definitely some positive uh, impacts of that, yeah.